Hello. Today I'm going to continue speaking about the flat earth, and I'm going to speak from the rational perspective of what God has revealed and what man has revealed about himself. I'm going to begin by looking at a verse from the book of Romans. Romans was written by the Apostle Paul, and in the very first chapter, verse 18, he says this, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Paul says that the Paul says that men of the world suppress the truth in their unrighteousness. Have you ever considered that? Have you ever thought of what that actually means? What does it mean for men to suppress the truth in unrighteousness? Well, let's go to a very clear example. In 1981, at the very beginning of Ronald Reagan's presidency, just a couple of weeks after he was inaugurated into office, William Casey, the CIA director, said this, Quote, we'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. Write that down. The director of the American CIA, Central Intelligence Agency, said, we will know. Our disinformation program is complete when everything the American public believes is false. It was in February 1981. I looked that up to see if it's accurate. I have checked it before and have found that it is. And on this particular uh, site that I found... I have something that is written by the person who actually heard it. The woman named Barbara Honegger, she writes, I am the source for this quote, which was indeed said by CIA Director William Casey at an early February 1981 meeting of the newly elected President Reagan with his new cabinet secretaries to report to him on what they had learned about their agencies in the first couple of weeks of the administration. The meeting was in the Roosevelt Room in the West Wing of the White House, not far from the cabinet room. I was present at the meeting as assistant to the chief domestic policy advisor to the president. Casey first told Reagan that he had been astonished to discover that over 80% of the intelligence that the analysis side of the CIA produced was based on open public sources like magazines and newspapers, as he did to all the other secretaries of their departments and agencies. Reagan asked what he saw as his goal as the director for the CIA. Mr. Casey, what is your goal? President Reagan asked, to which Casey replied with this quote, which I recorded in my notes of the meeting as he said it. Shortly thereafter, I told senior White House correspondent Sarah McClendon, who was a close friend and colleague, who in turn made it public. That was written by Barbara Honegger. She said that when asked the question about what is your goal? Secretary Casey said, we'll know our disinformation program is complete when everything the American people believes is false. Now we don't know, I don't know if President Reagan liked that answer. My guess is that he didn't because it was just a month later that they attempted to 
to kill him, to assassinate him. So on March 30th, 1981, John Hinckley Jr. attempted to assassinate President Ronald Reagan. That was just over a month from the time that the CIA director told him what the goal, what his goal for the CIA department was. Now, we don't know if President Reagan disagreed with that goal. We don't know if perhaps he he let Director Casey know that he disagreed with it and that the assassination attempt occurred because of that. But we know what the goal of the CIA was at the time, at the beginning, of President Reagan's presidency. So going back to Romans chapter 1, verse 18, again, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. This is exactly what Casey and his department were doing. They were suppressing the truth. They were putting a false narrative before all of the American public. They wanted the American public to believe a lie. Now let's read the rest of Romans chapter 1 in light of that statement from Director Casey of the CIA, starting again with verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. For what can be known about God is plain to them because God has shown it to them. For his invisible attributes, namely his eternal power and divine nature, have been clearly perceived ever since the creation of the world and the things that have been made, so they are without excuse. Remember, Paul was writing over 2,000 or around 2,000 years ago, not quite 2,000 yet. But he was writing before we had airplanes flying through our skies, dumping chemtrails into our skies night and day. You could see the skies clearly. You could see the movement of the planets, the movement of the stars, the movement in the sky. Today it's obscured. Why do they obscure the sky? Verse 21. For although they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks to him. But they became futile in their thinking, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Claiming to be wise, they became fools, and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images resembling mortal man and birds and animals and creeping things. Therefore God gave them up in the lusts of their hearts to impurity, to the dishonoring of their bodies among themselves because they exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to dishonorable passions. For the women exchanged natural relations for those that are contrary to nature. And the men likewise gave up natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another, men committing shameless acts with men and receiving in themselves the due penalty for their error. And since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind to do what ought not to be done. They were filled with all manner of unrighteousness, evil, covetousness, malice. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, maliciousness. They are gossip, slanderers, haters of God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil disobedient to parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless, though they know God's decree that those who practice such things deserve to die. They not only do them, but give approval to those who practice them. Well, men are the same now, aren't they? 
Today, we have men in power who try to deceive all of the world, who feed us lies constantly. The people of America still don't know the truth about 911, for example. They don't know that their government was complicit in that. We endure so many false flag attacks that we do not know a false flag attack from a real terrorist attack. What I want to do now is to take you to another scripture to two more actually I'm first going to take you to a couple of quick verses Jeremiah 31 35 thus says the Lord who gives the sun for light by day and the fixed order of the moon and the stars for light by night who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar the Lord of hosts is his name Jeremiah 31 36 says, if this fixed order departs from before me, declares the Lord, then shall the offspring of Israel cease from being a nation before me. And then in Jeremiah 33, 25, thus says the Lord, if I have not established my covenant with day and night and the fixed order of heaven and earth. There is a fixed order of heaven and earth there is a fixed order of the, of the moon and the stars. Do you know how all ancient mariners were able to navigate through our oceans? It was because there was a fixed order of the stars, the moon and the sun. And so they developed ways whereby they could measure angles between the horizon and a star's location, a specific star's location, and then determine where they were on the earth. Very profound and very difficult if you try to do it yourself to understand how they were able to navigate the oceans or even over land before we had any kind of electronic instruments or roads that took us where we wanted to go. And now I want to go to a psalm that is profound. Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky above proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours out speech, and night to night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Their voice goes out through all the earth and their words to the end of the world. You know, I've read Psalm 19 for over 40 years and I've always loved it. And I loved it more for what is going to come later than these first few verses, these first four verses, because I didn't understand them. It didn't make sense to me. But let's look at it and let's make sense out of it. The heavens declare the glory of God. When I declare something, I say it. What God is saying here through David is, the heavens speak. The heavens are saying something. Are you listening? And then also, in verse 1, the sky above, or the heavens, proclaim his handiwork. So the heavens... What we see above us, the sky, the firmament, the stars, the moon, the sun, 
they all declare the glory of God. Not only that, not only do they proclaim his glory, but they speak of his handiwork. They speak of his work. They speak of what he has done. When I speak, I give information. I give knowledge. I give understanding. That's what David is saying in this first verse. The heavens give understanding. The heavens give understanding concerning the glory of God and concerning the work of God, concerning the things that God has done, his handiwork, his workmanship. Verse 2. Day to day pours out speech and night to night reveals knowledge. See, that's what I didn't understand. Day to day pours out speech. What does that mean? What's being poured out? Speech. But how does the day pour out the speech? It's because the order of the stars is fixed. It's because the heavens were created in such a way that the order of the stars and the sun and the moon are fixed with respect to the earth. And they always move in the same pattern. And therefore, they're always speaking. They're always pouring forth speech. And they're always revealing knowledge. What kind of knowledge do they reveal? Well, to the mariners, they revealed how to get from one place to another, how to not get lost at sea. To those who are seeking God, they reveal that God is, that he exists. Because they reveal the glory of God. And then verse 3 says, There is no speech nor are there words whose voice is not heard. Paul made it very clear that the the unrighteous hold the truth in unrighteousness. That is that they prevent the truth from coming out. They pervert the truth. The unrighteous speak lies. They hold the truth in unrighteousness. The, those who know, and there are those who know, who are the unrighteous who rule the world right now, they understand the speech. The voice of the heavens, the voice of the fixed movement of the heavens has been heard. But those who control information, those who rule the world from dark places, from unseen places, the deep state, those who rule, they know the truth. But they hold the truth in unrighteousness and they do not let the people see it. There is no speech nor are there words whose voice is not heard. You see, the speech of God in the heavens has been heard, but the people suppress it. The rulers of the earth, the wicked of the earth, suppress it in their unrighteousness. Their voice, that is the voice of the heavens, goes out through all the earth. This is 19 verse 4. And their words go out to the end of the world. So, the voice of the heavens, the knowledge of the heavens, the information that the heavens give goes forth to the end of the world. And then even more now to reveal the movement of the stars and the sun as it relates to a fixed stationary flat earth. In them, that is, in the firmament, in the heavens, God has set a tent for the sun. So he has set a place for
before the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom leaving his chamber, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens, and its circuit to the end of them, and there is nothing hidden from its heat. So this reveals a sun that moves in a circuit around the earth. The earth does not move around the sun. All of scripture says that the sun moves. Remember the story of Joshua and how Joshua commanded the sun to be still, to not move so that it would remain light for a full day longer so that Joshua could complete the battle he was in. And now we come to the part of Psalm 19 that I have always loved because I, I thought I understood it. Okay, of course I only understood it a little bit, just like even now I only understand things a little bit. But verse 7, The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Do you remember how often I teach about to the law and to the testimony? If they will not speak according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Well, here David takes us to the law and to the testimony. The fixed movement of the stars in the heavens corresponds to God's law regarding their motion. The fixed movement of the stars in the heaven and the, the way the constellations are arrayed testify of the Lord. That's the testimony. A witness testifies. A witness gives his testimony. And so those of us who are witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will always speak according to the law and according to the testimony. The testimony is the historically accurate account of what God has done on the earth in the affairs of men. So again, after David tells us about the firmament, about the heavens and the speech that they pour forth, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. So there he's just using other words for the law and the testimony. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. And so he uses words to depict the law and the testimony. These things, the law, the testimony, the commandment, the precepts, the fear of the Lord, the rules of the Lord, they are to be more desired than gold, even much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them... By the law and the testimony is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Who can discern his errors? Declare me innocent from hidden faults. We trust in Jesus to declare us innocent of all of our faults. None of us are perfect. We must desire to be perfect even as he is perfect. We must love his law and his testimony. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins, from willful sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my Redeemer. The Bible speaks of a fixed stationary earth over which 
the stars, the sun, and the moon move in a fixed order. Men have suppressed the truth in unrighteousness. Men have conspired to keep people from understanding the works and the glory of God. Satan has moved in the hearts of men to prevent them from knowing and acknowledging God. Satan has used his doctrine of the global earth and the earth in a huge universe that's constantly expanding in order to promulgate his false doctrine of evolution, in order to create all kinds of false ideas and doctrines like aliens who are going to reveal that they were really our creators who helped us get started many, many years ago. No, we live in a enclosed, safe world. But it is a world in which the demonic exists. And it is a world in which many have been deceived. But the veil is beginning to lift. God is beginning to reveal his truth. And we are beginning to see and hear the speech of the creation of that which God made of his handiwork. Let us walk in the truth and let us never be ashamed to speak the truth. Do not fear the taunts and the ridicule of men. For of what account is man. Fear God. Fear God, not men. Do not be afraid to speak the truth when you know what the truth is.